In this video, we are going to create our first input component. We are going to put it under the form. Under the form, we're going to create a new directory for our inputs. So inputs and another directory, which will be input. We're going to have separate ones for selects, text area, and so on. So input. And here we're going to go for the text input. So just text file. I'm going to create it as a plain file. So text.view. And within this file, what I'm going to start with is going to be a template. And we're going to leave it empty for now. Then we're going to start with a script. And within the script, we are going to export default object literal. And here we're going to start with properties. So props and the object and what sort of attributes we want to attach to the tag of this component. Now, first one will be the group because we need to identify it. We need to connect it uh, with the wrapping form. So group. And that's going to be of the type string. And for required, we're going to set it to false. And actually, we need to change this under the wrapper as well. I just remembered that obviously here we've set it to true. Let's set, let's change it to false. And what this will allow us to do when we are going to have only a single form on the page, we will not have to set the group to make our events and listeners work together. OK, so that's a wrapper updated. The next property is going to be a name. And again, that's going to be of the type string and it will be required. So required set to true. Next one will be ID type string as well. And this one will be non required. So required set to false. Next, we will have a value uh, and we only going to specify that default value should be just an empty string. Then we will have current value, which will also def uh, current with the T, which will also default to an empty string current value is the value that we want the input to load with, then we're going to have a placeholder. This one will also be of the type string, and it will be non required. So required set to false. After placeholder, we're going to have focus. And this one will be of the type boolean. And the default value will be false. Now focus will be used together with this directive that I've provided here. So when the form first loads, if it will have focus set to true, then we are going to make sure that the focus is within the given input. Okay, then we have max length. And this one will be of the type string. And we'll say that this one is non required. So required set to false. After the max length, we're going to have autocomplete. And for autocomplete type string as well. And it will be non required. So required set to false. Okay, so these are our properties after the props property. Let's add data. This needs to be a method of function, which retains an object. And here we're going to add identity data property, which will check if this ID is present, then it will return it. Otherwise, it will use this name. This is to allow us only provide the name attribute without the ID. Most of the time you will have the input which ID and name are the same. So this is basically tackling this uh, sort of scenario. Otherwise, obviously, you can always specify a different ID than the name. That's why we have ID set to non required because if the name is the same as ID, you're only gonna have to provide the name. Now our templates input tag. And we start with the attribute type, which will be text in this case, next will be ID, but we proceeded with the colon. So ID, we proceed this with a column because we want to return the value associated with the property, we don't want to return the string. So identity, we don't want to return the string identity, we want to return the value associated with this property. The same goes for name, we go for name, then we have value, value, then we have max length associated with the max length, followed by the placeholder, placeholder, after this, we have autocomplete. 
after that we are going to use the, this focus directive so v focus and it will apply focus if our focus property is set to true and now let's register some input listeners so v on we are going to create a computed property input listeners let's copy the name and let's scroll down to the bottom after the data method let's create computed property as an object literal and let's paste the name that needs to be a function and here we're going to return object assign and we're going to use an empty object and then we are going to use default listeners so this listeners which represents all default input listeners in other words if anyone wants to attach any event listener to this given components tag it will still work with this input and now we want to override the single one which is input that will be a function which takes event as an argument this and we're going to go for emit method which we'll create in just a moment we take event target and we take its value so whatever is inside of this given input when we are actually typing in pass this to this emit method we haven't got this method yet so let's quickly create it after the computed let's create methods property and here we're going to have this emit method with the value as an argument and here we are going to use views built-in instance method emit which is this with the dollar sign emit and we are going to pass the type of the event which is input and then the value we want to send what this method will do is it will inform anyone that listens to this event in our case it's going to be our wrapper component which wraps this child component inside of it that the value of this input has changed let's now also add the mounted method which will be triggered when the component is ready this emit with this current value what this will do is when the component will be ready on page load this mounted method will be triggered and this will in return call this emit method with the value that we've associated with the current value property and that in return will obviously update the value stored on the wrapper so let's now save everything let's add our component so I'm going to duplicate this first line and just change it to text input and then let's change the name here it's going to be inputs input and text now let's save it let's open terminal and let's run npm run dev the files have now compiled so we can clear the console let's go back to the editor and what we are going to close all these let's open our main index.blade let's replace the default input tag that we've added in the previous lecture let's replace it with the text input now and we're going to add all these properties so we have group first group which will be taken from the form wrapper group so i'm just going to use props and group here so that will dynamically be passed to this child component next we are going to have name which is just a string so first name for instance then we are going to have v model to tell wrapper this is the field that we are actually associating with this uh, component so it's going to be props fields and its first name then we are going to have current value which i want to set to say sebastian then we are going to have focus do we want focus yes let's put focus on it so uh, with the colon focus because we need to pass the boolean value true then we're going to have placeholder we'll set to first name after this we're going to have max length let's specify it as nine only nine characters and then auto complete will set to given hyphen name okay if we save it and preview everything in a browser 
Now, first thing that you will see immediately is the fact that the value that we've specified for our current value is now actually displaying it within the input. We also have this focus. If I reload the page, you'll see the focus stays there. So the focus uh, directive kicks in as well. If we now have a look at our form wrapper under the view console, you will see that the fields are now pre-populated. We have this first name with the value that we specified listed under the fields of the form wrapper. So if we go back to the editor, let's have a play with this a little bit. You can see that we have this current value specified. If we don't specify, let's see if it's going to show up as well. If we refresh the page, now you see the field is empty, still with the focus. If we check the form wrapper, you'll see we still have the property, but now it's just an empty string. Another thing, if we now actually preview the output, the HTML output of this input, we'll see we have type text, ID first name and name first name. That is where this identity data property kicks in as well, because obviously we didn't specify the ID. But if we want to change it, let's just specify ID strictly here on this input. So ID, let's say first name hyphen one. If we save it, preview it in a browser, refresh, you'll see that the ID now has changed. But if we don't specify it, it will take the same name, the same value as the name property. We have placeholder autocomplete as well. But one thing that I can see is missing is the max length. And that's probably because I must have misspelled something. Let's just quickly go back to the editor. Yes, I have max length th. And if we let's just remove this ID straight away. And if we check the same under the text view, yep, the same thing, ht rather than th. If we save it now, if we recompile all the files, some npm run dev. And if we now preview everything in a browser, refresh. Now we have max length nine. Let's try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero doesn't go. So max length works as well. If we remove it, then you can see that obviously our placeholder is also in place. If you would like to read more about the things we've covered in this video, you can navigate to viewjs.org and under the components section, you can read more about custom events, about binding native events to components, something that we've covered as well with these input listeners and so on.